Hi, everybody. I hope you're well. Today, I will read from a book titled Back to the Drawing Board, Ed Rouché, Art and Design in the 1960s by Jennifer Quick, published by Yale University Press. From 1956 to 1960, during the years that he studied advertising design at Schoenert Art Institute, Ed Rocher worked various odd jobs around the city of Los Angeles. As Rocher was becoming known as an artist primarily for paintings of ordinary products such as spam and sun-made raisins, he was also putting in hours on nights and weekends assembling paste-up layouts for various print publications and personalizing small mementos for a mail-order company called Sunset House. Though Rocher only worked on his field of study for about six months as an assistant layout artist at the Carson Roberts advertising agency, he had to continue with these type of design jobs to finance his career as an artist. As he put it, if you were going to go to an art school, you had to have some skills that would allow you to moonlight in some other phase. The premise of this book is that this work and the skills it acquired proved to be much more than a means of making a living. Rocher's art is a lifelong engagement with the expertise, knowledge and networks he acquired at Schoenert Art Institute and continued to practice and utilize into the 1960s and beyond. Mid-century design provided the ground for Rocher's art, from his drawing methods to his archiving habits to his detailed accounting of the time and capital spent on art making. Design presented Rocher with a richly layered landscape of forms, images and methods, as well as a way of thinking and seeing and being in the world. Design was also woven into the very fabric of Los Angeles, a city whose economy was built upon interlaced networks of design producers. As Rocher climbed to the roof of the Carson Roberts building during his lunch break to take photographs with his Yashica camera, he could see this world of design embodied in the billboard of his own agency, with its whimsical logo and Have a Happy Day slogan. The term design, instrumental to Rocher's art and to his book's main argument, requires precise definition. As historians David Brody and Hazel Clark write, design, a fundamentally modern concept, is everywhere. With design, humans actively make and shape our world by constantly remaking and redesigning the environments in which we live. Design encompasses what Herbert Simon calls the artificial, the man-made artifacts developed to interface with specific environments. The concept of the interface links design systems and their inner organization and function to the environment in which design operates and also that it defines. As Simon writes, design has also an inspirational quality in that humans produce designs with a mind toward how things ought to be rather than how they are. This process of designing involves extensive research involving materials, means and methods that designers bring to bear on specific problems. This book looks at the status of design at a particular moment in US history, specifically in the 1950s, the decade when Rocher was in art school and in which the field of design was undergoing important redefinitions. At Schoenard, Rocher concentrated on advertising design, a sub-field that was rapidly expanding in concert with the growth of the post-war US economy. Advertising design belonged to a growing body of design professions, including fashion, industrial design or animation, all of which were taught at Schoenard and focused, broadly speaking, on objects designed and created for specific clients.
In the 1950s, the terms industrial arts, applied arts and commercial art were used interchangeably with the term design, and this was the case in the Schoenart course catalogues. At the same time, another term, graphic design, though it had been in use since the 1920s, was becoming more often employed to refer broadly to any printed two-dimensional design work, posters, ads, book covers, stationery, business cards. Advertising specifically was growing more image-driven versus the previous model of fitting the graphics to the ad copy. The term graphic design came to the forefront especially as recognizable designers such as Saul Bass, Louis Danzinger and Alvin Lustig made their mark on the design world with their agency work as well as independent projects. Bass, who was based in LA during Rouchet's Schoenard years, was the first to open his own independent design studio, an important break from the prevailing norm of the designer working in an agency. Yet, design still carried connotations of the commercial rather than the artistic. From classrooms to magazine articles, the tension between service to clients and creative prowess was omnipresent. In his 1953 assessment of US design education, Fortune Art Director Leo Leoni identified this tension as definitive of the field in that moment. He praised some of the nation's best-known art and design schools, including Schoenard, for encouraging students' creativity while training them as design workers. Notably, Leoni also used four discrete terms – applied arts, industrial arts, commercial art and design – in his opening paragraph, pinpointing the ever-present contradictions inherent in the practice of design. Leonis' assessment highlights the realities Rouchet encountered in his training and in his design work. Rouchet's relationship to design can also be better understood by describing the conventions, systems, tools, methods, habits and bodies of knowledge that shaped the field at the time. He absorbed these conventions through different modalities first in the form of a curricula and textbooks, through conventions of perspective, scaling tools and replication methods, but also in practice as he put these skills to use by sketching layouts, creating posters and designing beach towels for clients at Carson Roberts. At the agency, Rouchet also became immersed in the culture of a thriving design firm. A major player in West Coast advertising, Carson Roberts had accounts with Baskin Robbins, Mattel and Max Factor. The firm played a major role in luring the Brooklyn Dodgers baseball team to Los Angeles. They were also the first LA firm to have their own building, located on Beverly Boulevard, in the Fairfax neighborhood and next to West Hollywood. Designed by architect Craig Elwood, the building, which extended the length of a city block, was large enough to accommodate marketing, accounting, research and media departments. Carson Roberts became known for the logo captured in Rouchet's photograph, a combined effort of Ralph Carson and Tony Haller, an art director at the agency. As he learned and used the conventions of design at the school and in his work at the agency, Rouchet was also developing a particular way of thinking and of knowing the world, a set of assumptions about how objects are made, how they work and how they become a part of lived experience. This adds another layer of definition to the term design. The conventions Rouchet learned carried with them particular assumptions and propositions about how the world did and should work. As he began to pursue an art career in the early 1960s, Rouchet adopted design tools and techniques as well as its temporal rhythms, scalar operations, spatial modes and pictorial formulas in his artworks. He also assimilated design's cyclical working processes, its research-based mode of developing a concept, trying it out, tweaking it and tweaking it again, or, to nod to contemporary parlance, prototyping. 
this term widely used in the contemporary design and engineering context as well as in the user experience design refers to the concept of creating mockups or models drafts of an object experience or digital product that are used to test a product's viability Prototypes are often made of different materials, scaled down, simplified and relentlessly revised until the best solution is found. If one prototype fails, the designer tries again, an idea that finds popular expression in the idiom back to the drawing board. The origins of this phrase are conventionally traced to Peter Arno's notably 1941 cartoon published in The New Yorker. In Arno's sketch, a group of soldiers rushes toward a downed plane. Black smoke willows upward from the wreck, while farther away, a man ejected from the plane floats to safety beneath a parachute. At the right, an ambulance rushes forward to provide aid. While most of the soldiers are in the process of moving toward the plane, the engineer, clutching rolled up drawings under his arm, steps forward, signifying his desire to get to work on a better design. Accepting this failure as part of the process, he returns back to the old drawing board to make more drawings which will serve as blueprints for a functional airplane. Rouchet's penchant for replication of specific subjects as well as of his own works of art derives from a back-to-the-drawing-board mentality characterized by an embrace of experimentation and failure. Rather than seeking a final, resolved end product like the engineer in the cartoon, however, Rouchet reveled in moments of mistranslation, ambiguity and even failure, delighting in the comedy and confusion that resulted. In many instances his works have an unfinished or paused quality, as if they are still in this prototyping stage, ideas being worked out but not fully realized just yet. Riffing on design formulas for drafting ideas such as the rough or sketch for a layout, composition photographs and scaled-down architectural models, Rouchet examined design's forms and concepts, its modes of creating visual experiences and narratives, and its tools and materials. He often reflected on the process of making by leaving bare the systems and structures he was using, such as grids used as perspective lines or to facilitate enlargement, or by representing tools he used regularly, such as the yellow pencil. One of the major tasks of this book is to precisely articulate the expanded pictorial field that design made possible for Rouchet. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.